I'm going to show you how to make the witch's boot from the vintage boot set from Creative Kiwi and for that I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, two sheets of wash away stabiliser, matching bobbin and thread in every colour, mask and tape or painter's tape, my scissors, squizzers, an awl or a sharp pointed uh, tool to make holes in the eyelets fabrics and batting cut to size and I've also got some um, gift wrap elastic in silver for the laces. You're going to start off by hooping two layers of wash away stabiliser and I've got mine doubled over here as you can see. And I like to put pins around the edge, top edge of my hoop so that the stabiliser can't pull down as it's stitching. You're now going to pop that into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to do the batting placement outline. Before we go any further I just wanted to explain something. If you're going to be using vinyl on your boot for either all of it or in part, the areas that you're going to stitch uh, the vinyl with, I would suggest that you don't use any batting or if you are going to use, some, use something that's very very thin because when you get several layers of vinyl build up it's okay if there's only a single stitch line but when you've got satin stitch borders it, it can get very thick and it can cause thread and needle breakage so I would suggest to you that go ahead and use it by all means but don't put batting underneath and slow your machine down I'm going to place my batting down over this outline if you want to use a mixture of batting and vinyl um, you can do that perfectly easily you can place your vinyl down on the parts that you're going to use the vinyl don't put the bat your batting down first and then when you come to do the areas where you're going to be using fabric place the batting down with the fabric at the same time and stitch it down you only need to put the batting on the front you don't need it to put it on both sides and that way you'll still have a nice padded um, uh, texture to your, your boot but you won't have the bulk. You're also going to be, for every colour that you use, you're going to use the matching bobbin, so don't forget to change it each step that you do a colour change. I'm going to place my batting over the outline and tape it in place. And if you're new to machine embroidery, we use tape to hold the fabric or batting in place so that it doesn't move during stitching it's better than pins, there's less room for error and you're not going to damage your machine if the needle stitches through the tape. I'm now going to stitch round number two and that's going to do the placement outline for your fabrics as well as stitching down the batting. Remove the tape and you're now going to trim up all the excess batting from around the stitch line. You're now going to add your toe fabrics to the front and back of your hoop. So starting from the back, turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline of the toe and tape it in place. Turn your hoop over for the front facing up and place the fabric over the front, tape it in place and you're now going to stitch round number three. You're now going to trim up the excess fabric from both the front and the back and I like to start with the backs because it's easy to forget it. You 
you're now going to pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number four and that's going to zigzag around the raw edges of the fabric. You're now going to add the vamp which is this area here to both the back and the front. So just turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline there and tape it in place. Turn your hoop back and do the same on the front. You're now going to pop that back into your machine and stitch round number five and that's going to secure both the fabrics to the hoop. You're now going to trim up the excess fabric from both back and front of the hoop. So starting with the back. And you're now going to pop that back into your machine and stitch round number six and that's going to zigzag all around the edge of the vamp. You're now going to add the facing onto the back of your hoop. So turn your hoop over and place it over the outline and tape it in place. Turn your hoop back over to the front and now you're going to add your laces in on straight directly onto the, the batting here. So I'm going to take my longest piece and just wrap it around my fingers just so that I've got less uh, going on. I'm just going to leave a little tail and the rest I'm going to tape. And then the longest one goes at the bottom and the shortest lace goes at the top. So I'm going to place that over the outline and then just tape it in place. And you'll notice here that there's like a squiggly line and I'm just putting it where the, the first squiggle starts. And then I'm going to do exactly the same to the top. And there's a squiggle there and I'm just going to lay it over that and tape it in place. You can now place your facing fabric over the top and tape it in place. You're now going to pop that into your machine and stitch round number seven and that's going to secure the fabrics and the laces in place. You're now going to trim up the excess fabric from around the facing. So turn your hoop over starting at the back. And you're now going to trim up the front but you need to be careful not to cut your laces off. So I like to start there so that I don't forget. You're now going to pop that into your machine and stitch round number eight and that's going to zigzag all around the edge and I'm just going to move this tape back a little bit just so that it doesn't get caught in the zigzagging. You're now going to cover the shaft area of the boot which is here so turn your hoop over to the back Place your fabric over the top and tape it in place. Turn your hoop back so that the front's facing up and then place your fabric for the front over the top of the outline and tape it in place. I'm going to trim my fabric back a little bit. I was using an off cut so it's a little bit long. 
That squeaking in the background is my cat. He's curled up in a box and he's moving about. Right, so now I'm going to tape this down. You're now going to pop that back into your machine and stitch round number nine, and that's going to secure both the fabrics. You're now going to trim up the excess fabric from around the shaft, both back and front. You're now going to pop that back into your machine and stitch round number 10 and that's going to zigzag around the edge of the shaft. You're now going to cover the heel, so to start with the back of the hoop, turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the heel area and tape it down. Turn it back to the front and do the same on the front. You can now pop that in your machine and stitch round number 11 to secure both fabrics. You're now going to trim up the excess fabric from around the heel, so turn your hoop over to the back and then trim it up. Now do the same with the front. You're now going to pop that back into your machine and stitch round number 12 and that's going to do the zigzagging around the raw edge. You're now going to stitch round number 13 and that's going to do the quilting across the heel here so you might want to change your bobbin and thread for this. Round number 14 is going to quilt the vamp area so you might want to change your bobbin and thread for this colour if you do do it now. I've changed mine to pink. You're now going to stitch round number 15 and that's going to do the quilting in the toe area. So you might want to change your thread and bobbin for this. Round number 16 is going to quilt the shaft here, so you might want to change your matching bobbin and thread again for this. You might want to change your bobbin and thread again for this because you're going to stitch round number 17 and that's going to do the satin stitching around the edge and top of the shaft. Round number 18 is going to be the satin stitching around the heel here, so you might want to change your bobbin and thread for this. Next to be stitched is the satin stitching around the vamp area, so you might want to change your uh, bobbin and thread again for this. Next is the satin stitching around the toe area, so if you want to change your bobbin and thread now is the time to do so and then you're going to stitch round number 20. You're now going to do the satin stitching around the edge of the facing so if you want to change your bobbin and thread now is the time to do so and then you're going to stitch round number 21. You're now going to stitch the eyelets that go up the centre of the facing. So if you want to change your bobbin and thread, now is the time to do so. And then you're going to stitch round number 22. Now that the stitching's all finished, we're now going to free this from the hoop. You do have to be careful that you don't cut off your laces here. So turn your hoop over and put your hand behind where the laces are and then cut. 
I'm just pulling the lace out of the way with my fingers while I'm cutting. You're now going to remove all the excess um, stabiliser from around the edge of your boot. So a bit of warm water and a cotton bud and just wipe it around the edge. We're now going to pierce the holes in the centre of the eyelets and for that you're going to use an awl or I'm going to use my sharp stubby tool here and you're just going to push it through the centre. Give it a bit of a wiggle about just to enlarge it as much as you can and then just go up all of them. Okay, now I'm going to take my large um, bodkin needle and with the top thread I'm going to just going to thread that onto the needle there we are and you're going to thread that through from the back to the front like so and that's as far as you go with the top one and then you're going to bring the bottom one up and you're going to go from the front towards the back with this one Remove the needle and I'm going to tie my bow you can trim the laces to however long you want them And there's our witch's boot. I hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's lots of ideas of an inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me.